Where do you go to ask Google Cloud Platform questions? How do you share best practices? And how can you learn from others? How do you stay up with the pace of GCP? In this video, we'll walk through some prominent resources and also through some less obvious ones that may work well for you in your GCP journey. Having the right resources of information and using the right communication channels can be the difference between a regular and a highly productive GCP user. The good news is you found this video, so you're already on the right path. It all starts with the Google Cloud homepage at cloud.google.com. This page remains a reference for product descriptions and documentation. Since many developers identify themselves by the language of their choice, we have landing pages for the most popular languages supported by GCP, such as Go, Python, Java, Node.js, PHP, .NET, Ruby, and Kotlin. Let's take Go as an example. The landing page for Go will walk you through how to deploy your web apps using App Engine and how to use GCP's idiomatic Go APIs and libraries. If you look at Kotlin, you'll find quick starts for Compute Engine, Kubernetes Engine, and App Engine, as well as code labs and tutorials to build auto-scaling backends from mobile apps, and instructions for using your favorite Java and Kotlin frameworks. Blog posts are great resources for both new and seasoned users to stay on top of GCP. The main Google Cloud blog at cloud.google.com blog typically has multiple posts a day and covers products, features, and also partner and customer stories. You are probably also interested in content that is not exclusively written by Google. The GCP Medium publication is a list of articles curated by practitioners for practitioners. If you'd like to share your experience with the community, this is a great place to be noticed. This publication also features a weekly recap of the GCP news in the last week. And believe me, there's no such thing as a quiet week. If you're into podcasts, maybe you have a commute or some other time to listen to technical audio content, then you should subscribe to at least one of these two weekly podcasts, the GCP podcast and the Kubernetes podcast. Both of them feature news of the week and interviews with Google engineers, as well as partners, customers, and community members. Since you're watching this, you may be interested in more video content from the GCP YouTube channel. We have videos published here on a regular basis, and most of them are grouped into playlists around topics, products, and events. There are other several related YouTube channels, such as Firebase, TensorFlow, Google Developers, G Suite, or Apigee. If you're hanging out on Twitter, you should definitely follow Google Cloud Platform at GCP Cloud. And consider also following one of these active accounts, Firebase, G Suite Developers, Google Maps Platform, Google Open Source, and again, Apigee. Several GCP members monitor these handles to engage with the community, and it can be a great way to get the team's attention. Of course, this is not a replacement to our support options. While we're on the topic of social media, we also have spaces on Facebook as well as on LinkedIn. Check those out. The GCP community is large, vibrant, and growing quickly. It exists online and in a variety of real-world places. And this community landing page covers both. Community tutorials are community-contributed how-tos with an open publishing process hosted on GitHub. There are close to 200 tutorials to date. And if you cannot find what you're looking for, you should request it, or maybe even write something yourself and submit it. On the real world side, user groups and GCP meetups are great places where like-minded people meet to share their experiences, their best practices, and maybe even to find a job. There are active meetup groups around the world, and there should be one nearby. If not, then create one. It's easy, and the personal rewards are numerous. You can also attend conferences, small, medium, or large ones, such as the one organized by Google, Google Cloud Next, or our summits or onboard events in dozens of cities around the world. You will also find GCP content in many industry events, such as OSCON, KubeCon, DevOx in Europe, and of course, in the more than 600 community-led DevFest events. 
In all these events, you will be able to learn from technical sessions, meet with cloud engineers, and ask questions. Getting help from peers can turn out to be a big asset, and some of it can come in the form of answers on Stack Overflow. But did you know that Google engineers maintain and monitor a number of GCP-related tags? This is part of GCP community support, and details are documented in the page mentioned in the description below. Of course, there is always formal support. And if you're starting out with GCP, then I would suggest that you purchase silver level support using a portion of your $300 trial credit right from the console in the support section. Here's a quick tip. With a picture being worth 1,000 words, imagine the value to your colleagues of a visual representation of your GCP architecture made with great looking icons and diagrams from cloud.google.com slash icons. This resource contains vector graphics, PNGs, slides, and templates for popular tools such as Lucidchart and Draw.io. And last but not least, I couldn't leave you without a cheat sheet, the Google Cloud Four Words or Less Cheat Sheet. The sheet comes in many different formats, including several print-friendly formats, and it is maintained on GitHub. It's a very popular resource, and you should definitely check it out. As you can see, there are many options for you to consider. Pick the ones that work best for you, and share anything that you'll find missing in the comments. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, comment, share, and look forward to more GCP Essentials videos.